Miss Brown here in front of Sebago Lake. In this video, we're gonna focus on our source of drinking water and how we protect that source of drinking water. Now, let me tell you about Sebago Lake. It's located in Cumberland County with seven towns on its shoreline. It's only about 30 minutes from Portland, and I think it kind of looks like a heart. Sebago Lake is also the source of Portland Water District's drinking water, and that's served 200,000 Mainers in the greater Portland area. And we feel really lucky at the Water District to have Sebago Lake as our source of drinking water because it has a lot of really great qualities that make it ideal to use. I'm gonna share those qualities with you, but before I do, I want you to take a moment to think about the qualities you'd want in your ideal source of drinking water that's a lake. So go ahead and pause the video and go for it. Thanks for doing that brain work. Now let's see if your description of an ideal drinking water supply lines up with the, all the reasons that we think Sebago Lake is great. All right, reason number one, Sebago Lake has a lot of water. You wouldn't want to run out of water, so I bet you had plenty of water on your list that you just created. Sebago Lake is the deepest and the second largest lake in Maine, and it holds nearly a trillion gallons of water, which is kind of a tough amount to conceptualize. So let me, let me get you imagining this. Imagine if you emptied Sebago Lake's water into those big water trucks. You could fill a lot of them, like a lot, a lot. So many that you could line them up end to end, and that line of trucks could reach from the earth to the moon and back twice. Basically, we've got a lot of water and we're not worried about running out. Reason number two, Sebago Lake is surrounded by lots of forests. And forests may not have been on your list that you created because they're on the land, but what's on the land influences what's in the water. And forests help to protect water. To get you thinking about that, I'm gonna have you answer this question. What happens to rain when it lands in a forest? Go ahead and pause your video. You might have said that it soaks into the ground or that it evaporates, and those things do happen. But let's actually get a closer look at what really happens when it rains in a forest. Rain in a forest gently makes its way to the ground after hitting all of the leaves of the trees. Then it trickles into the forest floor, moving through sticks, leaves, and moss, eventually seeping into the soil. In here, roots will absorb the water. Any pollutants carried by that water attach to the soil and remain there excess water gets slowly released into streams and rivers, much colder and cleaner than it would be if that water had moved through, say, a city. This is what happens on the land that drains to Sebago Lake, called the Sebago Lake Watershed. Because it's mostly forested, all those rivers and streams, the blue squigglies connected to the lake, empty into Sebago, bringing really clean water to the lake. All right, moving on to reason number three. Sebago Lake has excellent water quality, and I bet you put clean water or something like that on your list, and Sebago Lake's got it. Mostly, it has some excellent water quality because of the natural features that we've already talked about, its size and the forests that surround it. When water starts out really cold and really clear to begin with, that's a really great starting point when it comes to turning that water into safe drinking water. Now this last feature about Sebago Lake is probably not one you listed. Reason number four, Sebago Lake is special to a lot of people. It is used for drinking water, but it has a whole lot of other uses to a whole lot of other people. And I bet you might be one of them. Why don't you take a moment to make a list of the ways that Sebago Lake is used besides as a drinking water supply. And if you have some ways that it connects to you personally, go ahead and write the ways that you use it. Tens of thousands of people, Mainers and out-of-staters alike, use Sebago Lakes for so many things. Its shores have many homes, camps, and beaches, and the lake is used for swimming, boating, fishing, kayaking, snowmobiling. Maybe you've been on the lake doing some of these things that I've mentioned. Now, all of these uses do have the potential for pollution, but all of these uses are just more ways that people connect to Sebago Lake and understand that it's important for Sebago Lake to stay clean for all of these different uses for years to come. My name is Paul Hunt, and I'm the environmental manager here at the Portland Water District. I work with Ms. Brown and Mrs. Plummer, and I wanna tell you something else about Sebago Lake. There's a law called the Safe Drinking Water Act, and it applies to all water supplies in the United States, including 
Sebago Lake and the Portland Water District. This law ensures that drinking water delivered to customers is safe to drink. Portland Water District and Sebago Lake have a special exemption from one part of this law, and that exemption is called a waiver to filtration. So what exactly is a waiver to filtration? It means that water from Sebago Lake gets to skip what's usually the first step in treatment known as filtration, and this saves our customers a lot of money. One requirement for having this waiver to filtration is that the lake has to be kept very, very clean. Well, this is what Sebago Lake's water looks like before it even enters the treatment process. If Sebago Lake was dirty and had a lot of algae in it, we wouldn't be able to keep our waiver to filtration. And by the way, people also wouldn't be able to enjoy the lake in all the ways they do now. The good news is we have source protection programs in place and people working very hard every day to make sure the lake stays clean. I'm Mrs. Plummer. It takes a lot of people to protect Sebago Lake and the Portland Water District helps by having source protection programs. As the name implies, we protect our source of drinking water, Sebago Lake. We're also required to have these programs through our waiver of filtration. Each year, we're also audited, which is like a really big test to prove that our programs are in place and that they're protecting and maintaining our excellent drinking water quality. Now, what are our source protection programs? What do we do to help protect Sebago Lake? One way we do this is to protect this section of Lower Bay on Sebago Lake the most. This is where our water intake pipes are. Those are the pipes that draw the water from Sebago Lake into our water treatment facility. We protect the land and the water of this area the most, leaving 90% of the lake open for other types of recreation. We also work with landowners and state and town officials to inspect and support projects near the lake that could affect its water quality. So why don't you take a minute and try to guess what the biggest threat to fresh water quality is? Pause the video right now and answer this question. What was your guess? Did you guess maybe that it was soil? Soil is our number one threat to fresh water quality and that's really surprising to people. Soil has nutrients in it which can have really negative effects on water quality like algae growth. Because of that, we have programs in place where our staff meet with landowners to provide lake friendly recommendations for people to put on their land around the lake. We also keep soil and lots of other pollutants out of the lake by maintaining these beautiful forests around the lake and in the watershed, that land that drains to Sebago Lake. We have found that that is such an effective way to keep pollution out of the lake that the Portland Water District contributes money to purchase forested land so it filters our drinking water forever. We also have programs in place where we test the water quality of Sebago Lake. We're looking for things like how clear the water is, what the temperature of the water is, and how much algae grows in the water. In addition to that, we teach people about Sebago Lake, the threats to it, and how to protect it. This video is an example. Lastly, we work with hundreds of lake protection partners to make sure that we're all doing everything we can to protect this amazing drinking water source of Sebago Lake. We work with partners from land trusts all the way to government officials and even schools like the one you attend. Thanks for joining us in this video where you learned about our source of drinking water, Sebago Lake. We hope you join us next time so you can learn about how all that water from Sebago Lake is treated at the Sebago Lake Water Treatment Facility here in Standish. See you next time.